Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, the Sunday Night Purge Call. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday evening with us. I know today it was an absolutely gorgeous day um, in Dallas, and I'm sure it was across the rest of the country. People got a lot of stuff going on, soccer and football and all kinds of stuff going on with their kids and baseball. We're still playing baseball. So um, thank you so much for taking your time out to join us this evening. Um, As I had mentioned earlier, make sure you have your calendars out, your list of 10 ready, and a pen and a pad handy so you can take notes as we work. And if you can't take notes fast enough, that's okay. We're going to make sure we post this call on the EC Riders Facebook page. EC as an executive consultant, EC Riders Facebook page. And Richard, um, this entire week, will also record his victims every day when they catch up and do their accountability call. He'll be sure to post that as well. Um, Just want to make sure that um, you're working right along with us. And we believe that structure is the key to this business, and that's why we ask you to have those things and work with us, because we truly believe that that's a silver bullet in this business, to have structure, so you know every day what you need to do. Those, even if it's 15 or 20 minutes a day to stay persistent and consistent, we want to make sure you have that structure, and every day when you get ready for your day, you know what you need to do. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and re- introduce our host. If you're not familiar with this gentleman, he's been in the business about six years, almost seven, I believe. He is what we call financially free, which means a residual check comes to his mailbox or his bank account on the 15th of every month, so he never has to worry about his bills. He is a businessman in his own right. He's had several barbecue restaurants. He owns a traditional music box business. He had a graphic design business many years ago. He sold for several million dollars. So he's very well versed in uh, traditional business as well as in ambient energy. Um, again, he's an executive consultant. He's been on the cover of Success from Home magazine. He's um, also uh, earned his way into a five-star trip. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce my dear friend and mentor, Mr. Richard Laidler. Richard, are you there? Can you hear me, Michelle? I can hear you now. Aha! Uh-huh. Oh, you got to love technology. There's always that little panic. <laughs> and I'm thinking, please, please work. But the problem was I hadn't put the host code in. So who's the silly sausage? I am. All right, guys, how are you doing? It is 8 o'clock on Sunday evening here in sunny Texas. And um, you can hear your sunny Texan host here with his lovely southern drawl coming at you across the airwaves for you up in New York. Um, thanks for staying up so late. Shout out to you, Rebecca. How are you, my lovely? And for everybody else over there in California, hope you enjoyed your lunch. And uh, thank you very much for joining us on this fantastic, wonderful call. Um, yeah, the, uh, well, first of all, thank you, but also give yourself a little pat on the back. Reach over your left shoulder, give yourself a little pat and say, well done me for taking an hour out to invest in your ambit business. It's probably the best thing. We need to make sure that we plan our week. Otherwise, we ain't going to do it. Um, The one thing about this call is that uh, it's really easy to do right. It's really easy to do right. Once we know the system, we ask people to take a look at what we're doing. They either join or they don't. It's really easy to do right. But it's also very easy to do wrong. Um, But the thing is, more than anything else, it's easiest not to do at all. And I'm telling you, if you don't plan your week and you're just relying on spare time, um, then you're not going to do it. And uh, a week can go by, and all of a sudden, you think, oh, my goodness me, I haven't done anything with my Ambit Week. And that's the purpose of this course. You can go to all the trainings there are, and they are some fantastic trainings. And for those of you that were the training yesterday, I know you got some fantastic advice from some of the best leaders around the country. But I'm telling you that I don't care how well trained you are, if you don't put the time aside to do what we need to do, then that training is worth naught or nout or however you want to pronounce it, depending on where you are from around the country. So the purpose of this call is to make sure that you put the time in your calendar to do the 30 to 60 minutes a day that you need to do to have a successful business. And so that's what we do on this call. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of spend like about five minutes just because kind of, we've got a lot of new people on the call. Uh, we've actually got, wow, we've got a lot of new people on the call. Um, thanks very much for getting on the call. I guess the news has spread. 
um, that uh, there's some good information to be had here. <clears throat> We're just going to kind of spend a bit, five minutes, what we do on the call, because it's relevant to what you're going to do in the week. Um, and so uh, the first thing we need to talk about just really initially before um, we kind of get into it is just your mindset. Um, as I say, the most important thing is that, you know, everybody on the call is on the call because they made a decision to have some success in their ambit business. We didn't start this business just to, you know, lay out 75 bucks and hope that something was going to happen. We know that we've got to put some time into this. Some of you will have spent $429 for those who have been in the business for quite a few years. Um, and I need you just to have a think about, you know, I'm in the business, so I'm going to do something. I'm going to make something work. And, and really I'm going to ask you just for the mindset you need to have is I'm going to make one decision, not 365 decisions a day, a year. So often we think, am I going to go to that, pres that business presentation? Am I going to make that call? Am I going to do this? And each time it's a decision. What you need to do is, as of today, don't look back. You know, that was yesterday. As of today, make one decision. Say, yes, I'm going to give what I need to to my ambient business. One decision is going to be, I'm going to go to one business presentation. I'm going to make my, you know, two calls a day or whatever it happens to be. And make it one decision. Don't make it a decision every time that decision needs to be made. Because if you had a crappy day at work, your decision might be the wrong one. So make one decision, okay? Remember, easy to do right, easy to do wrong, and easiest not to do at all. Okay, so second thing we need to think about as far as mindset is concerned is the roadmap how to do this is in the business presentation. There's a slide in there that says, if you can get you find three people, right, who want to join the business with you, three people who, have, you know, who are motivated and want to make some money, and help them get a couple of customers for those of you in, um, outside of the state of Texas where you can get yourself three customers. If you do that and you get your three, three consultants, help them get their three or two or three customers and then teach them to do the same thing, that's all you need to do. People think, oh my gosh, I've started my business. I need to get 50 or 100 customers or I need to go get 50 or 100 consultants. Over time, you probably are going to have that number of consultants personally sponsored. But if you just go into your business thinking, I just need three consultants, get them a couple of customers each, and then teach them to do the same thing. And all you need to do is once you've brought someone in your business, get them on this call, I'll do the training for you. Because everything I do on this call is everything they'll need to know to have a successful business. So mindset number one, make one decision, not a different decision every day. One decision, am I going to make this business successful? Yes or no? Yes, I am. Okay, so on Thursday night or Tuesday night or whenever your business presentation, it's not a decision, do I go or not? It's, I made that decision today, okay? Then our second uh, mindset is to make sure all you understand is you need to get yourself quali uh, to qualify three people in your business. And the, set, and the third thing from a mindset perspective, and this is probably the hardest one for people to really grasp. I gave Rebecca a shout out earlier on, and we, we talk, I was chatting with her the other day about this, um, is not to care if they join or not. If so many people are frightened to make a call because they're thinking, oh, this guy would be great, or this girl would be great in the business, and they're thinking, oh, I'm really nervous about calling them. And the only reason why you'd be nervous about calling them is because they're going to say no or think you're an idiot or something like that. But usually it's the fact that they're going to say no, is you're worried that they're going to say no. You've got to just basically put that to one side just, and just understand for some people it's just not the right time. There are some people who are going to say no to anything and everything. You could literally turn up to them with a wheelbarrow full of $100 bills, and they'll be suspicious. And those folks probably are never going to join your business. But there'll be a lot of folks who are looking at the business, and for some reason, it's just not the right time. That's okay. They're going to get a call back in three or six months or whatever, and that may be the right time. So number one, one decision. Number two, you only need to qualify three people in your business and teach them to do the same. And number three, you don't care if they join or not, okay? You don't care if they join or not. You're going to fight. Remember, you need three. So if seven say no out of the ten people you speak to and three say yes, you've done your work because you're going to teach them to do the same thing. And then finally, um, basically, what, what, the most important thing in your business is what Michelle was talking about just before we got started and I kind of alluded to is just to make sure you've got structure in your business because no matter how well you invite, no matter how great a presentation you do if you're not structured in your business you're not doing the few things you need to do every day monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday um then you may as well turn your website off i mean literally because it's not going to build your business is not going to build okay so make sure you put some structure in your business even if the structure is i'm going to do this two times a week okay so i'm not saying it's the volume of work i believe you can build this business at four speeds spare time well, 
I say I believe you can build a business at, in, at four speeds. There are four speeds that people build this business. Spare time, that one ain't going to work. The second one is just a part-time where you're just reacting to people saying, gosh, I wish I had some more money. I wish I could get a new job. I wish I could do this. And you say, hey, you know what? I may have something that will help you out. There's, a, there's the, the speed three, which is proactive, but with proactive calls. Um, and then there's speed four, which is like, you know, crazy, uh, just going crazy for it, um, where you're literally doing 10 calls a day. And there are plenty of people out there that are doing it. All it's going to do is change the speed at which your business is going to grow. It's going to grow. I built my business all the way to EC with speed two. I was so busy with my restaurants and my other business uh, that I've made very few proactive calls. And I'm embarrassed to say that. Because I could have got, it took me four years to get to EC, and I could have got there in 18 months to two years if I'd been more pro, if I'd done what we do on this call. If I had done that I was, as I was building towards EC, then I would have got there a lot quicker. But I was building because, all I, because I was so busy, but I promised myself, if I hear pain, I will show them the business. I will, show, I will offer them help. I've got people texting me, and it's not coming up on here, so I'm not sure who's texting me. Um, okay. So, that, so that's my point, is you can build the speed at whatever you like, just not spare time. Just not spare time. Even if it's just going to be you've got time for three days a week, that's fine as long as it's put in your calendar and you do it and you make one decision to do it, okay? All right, so then as far as the process we're going to go through, um, we're going to work with our written list today. Um, and uh, we're basically going to just, uh, we, we, first of all, make sure we have an accountability partner, make sure we're going to work with someone. I definitely think you need to have that because if you rely on yourself to be your boss, you're a little too forgiving, a little too forgiving on yourself, and you probably don't want to do that. So as a part of this call, I'm going to bring on a guest in a second, and we're going to work this week, and I'm going to be her accountability partner. And the way we work this week is the way you should build your business. Is to make sure, even if you're just doing a couple of calls a day, make sure at the end of the day you call your upline, crossline, or, or whoever it is who's your accountability partner to just tell them how the calls went. Even if it, you know, even if they're, um, if you're both MCs, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have questions you don't know the answers to, by all means, go reach out to an SC or whatever. The reason why you have an accountability partner is just to make sure you did the calls. Because if you do the calls, even if they're pretty poorly done, you'll find your three. Remember, we only need three. Okay, so we're going to work. So you've got your accountability partner. We're going to build a written list. And then we're going to use um, a scoring system that I call Erica. Um, and if that's an acronym for um, giving the person you're talking to a score. Erica, E is for entrepreneurial. How entrepreneurial they are, are they? We're going to score them from one to three. Um, R means how resourceful are they? Are they a resourceful type of person, or, they, or do they just sit back and become a victim of life? Score them one to three again. I is how much influence do they have? Do they know lots of people or not? City, C in the Erica is city. How close are they? I'm going to give them a higher score if they're my next door neighbor than if they're you know, up in New York or something like that where it's a little harder to deal with them. Everyone's going to get a call. It's just that it's going to bring these people to the top of the list, so you're going to call them first. And then A is attitude. Okay, I'll post that on the Facebook page. So if, for those of you who didn't manage to write it down and say to me, oh, what was the acronym, Erica? I'll put it on the Facebook page so you can see what it is there. And you're going to score them one to three on that. And so the top score will be 15, and the lowest score, I think, is five. And the highest scores will go to the top of your written list. And then what you're going to do on Sunday, uh, like today, I'm going to do with my guest today, is you're going to take the top 10 names and we're going to work with them. And with your accountability partner, like I'm going to do with my guest today, we're going to work out the perfect invites for each one of those 10 people. And then we're going to do two calls a day, two on Monday, two on Tuesday, two on Wednesday, two on Thursday, two on Friday. And then got, we're going to do one accountability call. So my guest today will have 10 names. 10 invites, she'll do 10, sorry, two invites a day, Monday through Friday, and one accountability call. And that is an awesome week. Imagine starting your Monday, you're driving to work, and on the, on the passenger seat is a piece of paper with 10 names, 10 invites, all done, um, ready for you to do a couple of invites on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's a good week because you know you're going to make 10 invites. And even if nothing happens, that's okay. You're going to do it again the following week. You're going to do it again the following week, and you'll find your three. And remember that the treasure map is on the business presentation. Three, you get 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 three. Seven levels down is $11,500 in residual income. Is it worth it? Oh, yes. And all you need to do is that simple, simple structure. Is that a hard structure? 
If it's a hard structure, you can text me right now. My number is 214-766-4613. If you think that's difficult to do, then I will um, – uh, you can text me, and I'll text you back, and we'll talk about it, and you can tell me what, you, what we need to do to make it a little easier for you. But trust me, it's a written list. It's scored using the Erica system. It's your top ten names. Create an invite with your, um, with your sponsor, well, with your uh, accountability partner. Um, uh, write, the, write the invites down once you've got them prepared, and then have those invites next to you so you can make your calls Monday through Friday and then an accountability call. And it's as simple as that, and that's all we do. And we're going to do that on the call right now with my special guest. So you can. So here I am telling you what to do, and lots of people do that. They stand on the front of the stage, and they say, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I'm going to tell you, right, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is because I'm going to do it with a consultant right now, live, for you to listen to. So I'm throwing myself under the bus um, to make sure that I can prove to you that I can uh, what I'm, that I do what I ask you guys to do. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my um, special guest. We call her, uh, or any of my guests, I affectionately refer to them as my victim um, because uh, I'm going to be pretty uh, a good account, a good solid accountability partner this week. And that's not mean. It's just that I'm going to make sure that she does what she says she's going to do. Um, and that's what a good accountability partner is. And if I have an accountability partner with me, I've been doing one with my, my weight loss with um, senior consultant Paul Mitchell a little while ago. I made sure I did what he told me, what, what I told him I was going to do. So I'm going to bring my guest on the call right now. Um, she's, I've only got to know her very recently. Most of the guests, by the way, on this call are not in my team. And so it's not like we have an unfair advantage. It's someone, you know, I, who I kind of know a little bit. Sometimes I don't know him at all, or sometimes I know him pretty well. With my guest today, um, I met her. She, we've chatted a couple of bits on Facebook and then uh, a couple of times on Facebook, and, but I actually got to meet her at one of our team dinners Recently, I'm very excited to bring regional consultant Sandra Lowther on the call. Are you there, Sandra? I am here, Richard. There you are. You see, the technology works for you, my lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you doing? You're not too scared, not too nervous? Oh, no, not at all, Richard. <laughs> I know. Don't, don't. I mean, yeah, don't you... my palms are sweating and my toes are sweating, to be honest with you. Oh. I know I'm in good hands, and uh, I'm very excited about this opportunity and thank you so much hey sandra no problem bless your little cotton socks don't be um <laughs> nervous i will take care of you it's my job to take care of you and and as i said to you when we chatted earlier on there are a lot of people who are listening on this call we got almost 100 people on the call right now not that that's going to hopefully scare you at all um but we've got a, we've got a, quite a few people from around the country who are just listening in but i promise you that every one of them will have been through, you know, what you've been through, I've been through it. Um, uh, no matter what happens on this call, uh, my job is to help you and coach you through it, even if things go right, even if things go wrong. Because when we're running our business, things go right, things go wrong, an invite goes wrong. We get dragged into a presentation on the call, or we have a day where it's so busy we didn't make our calls. And that, that's the purpose of this. It's not a test for you to see how well you do. It's to show people how... Um, you know, to coach people who, uh, how to deal with a week. And also for those of you who are regional consultants and senior consultants on the call, how you can be a, a good accountability partner for someone. So um, that's the purpose of this call. So your job is not to be perfect. You know, in fact, almost, I almost want you to be imperfect so we can work through it together and people can listen in and learn from it. So don't you worry about a thing, my lovely. Um, okay. But let's get started. Let's get started. Before we get, uh, I want everybody to kind of know who you are um, so that we can relate to you. So if you wouldn't mind, just give us like 30 seconds to a minute of who you are, your, you know, your family, you know, maybe kind of the, uh, the generation that you're in. I certainly would never ask a young lady to say her age, but just kind of whereabouts you are, what you maybe do alongside Ambit so we can kind of relate to you. Okay, great. So uh... – I've been married for 30 years, and I have a 24-year-old son, so that tells you what era I'm in there. Um, <laughs> I've been in the cleaning industry for 30 years, and I'm just three clients away from retiring from that, hanging my mop and broom up. I'm so excited about that. And um, my true passion, what I've done on the side of the cleaning is I've staged homes for sale, I've decorated and done floral design, and that, those are real passions of mine that I've done on the side. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I promoted to regional. Uh, Congratulations. Last week, thank you, on the 19th, which actually was uh, the day after my father's birthday. He's been gone about five years, so it was just really special that I, you know, uh, uh, promoted the day after his birthday. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, just I have a passion to help people, and when I heard about this business, that I could help people save money and help people make money, that just really resonated with me a lot and to also know this business is willable I, I, I when I leave this earth I want to leave something for my son so knowing whatever I build it up to uh, will be left for him so, so let me ask you um, Sandra what's your what's what's your why what's the why that makes you cry why are you doing the business what's your thing well, what's, your, what's your passion for this well the, the saying that right there was making me cry every time I would say that knowing this is willable, and I believe this for my son. I've said mm-hmm. it so many times. I think all the tears are out. The emotion's still there. But, um, sure. again, that it's willable, I will leave it for him. My husband, about three years ago, had, you know, we were talking, and he said we really need to look at something residual, you know, residual for, for, for us as we go to retire. We have nothing in retirement. So that is um, another why. And and the fact that I am not selling a product to someone, I'm not asking anyone to, you know, spend any more money out of their budget. It's what they're already paying for, and I can help them save money and make money. Um, So those are pretty much my my whys. Okay. All right. Well, let me tell you, that's a great why. Obviously, the – uh, the fact that it's willable, I completely agree. Retirement, that's my thing. I'm absolutely petrified. I'm not going to have enough money for when I retire. And I, you know, you think about, you know, you see, see folks who are, you know, who are uh, maybe in their late 60s and 70s and this type of thing and still having to work. And uh, that's something I don't want to do. So I completely understand that. But let's dive straight on in because, again, I want to make sure that we can um, get a few invites done. If we don't get all the invites done for all 10 um, calls, we'll do them on the accountability calls during the week. Those accountability calls, as Michelle was saying at the beginning of the call, will be recorded, and I post them up on EC Riders. And do have a listen to those. I I record them in such a format that you can listen to them on your phone, on the way to work, on the way back from work. And that's probably where the most coaching is on these calls. I mean, this, this this project is a full week from this Sunday to next Sunday plus Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Sunday and Sunday are recorded and live as well. The Monday to Friday are not live because we don't know what time of day we're going to do it, but they are recorded and put up on Facebook. So make sure you give that a lesson. But I've got a question for first, first of all for you, Sandra. Have you got a written list? Yes, sir, I do. Good girl. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm next you haven't got an accountability partner for this week, and of course I know the answer to that because you've got me, and I'm a toughie. Trust <laughs> me, I'm pretty, I'm pretty scary. I'm going to make sure you do what you're supposed to do. But I do it with a smile, so it's lovely, okay? I'm um, ready. My next, my next question is, did you, have you scored your list using the Erica system? Yes, I have. I've, Look I've got at a, you. I've, I've got a sheet of uh, 11s and 12s here. Fantastic. I, I All right, so we got to – go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say I do have one that could possibly be rated as a 3, but – um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but most of these are 11 and 12. So okay, good deal. All right, so so we've got so we've got a ri- so you've got an accountability partner. That's me. Um, you've got a written list, which is awesome. You've scored it using the Erica system. And again, remember, I'm going to put that up the sc- how to score up on the Facebook page. So you got that too. So we've got a list of so you got a, a, a 10 names that have gone to the top of the list. Correct? Yes. Great. Okay. So what I need you to do now is to give me those names, just the first names for the moment, and then we'll start creating some invites for those names. So give, so go through the names and give me enough time between these just to write them down real quick. So who have we got? Okay. So we've got Greg, mm-hmm. and he's, he's actually on my chicken list. So okay. I, I put him at the very top. Uh, we've got Gary. Okay. Brian. Yep. Karen. Yep. John. Yep. Carol. Yep. Jack. Okay. Becky. Okay. Donna. Okay. And Joyce. Joyce. All right. Okay, let's talk about Greg first of all. This is the, Now, let me tell you this before, by the way. The fact that Greg is at the top of your list 
is the reason why we do the Erica system. Because very often, if someone scores high, it's amazing how very often they are also on your checking list. By definition, people think they are a business owner or they're an attorney or they're a doctor. I'm not going to call them. And this is why we do the scoring, because it forces you to give them a call. And let me tell you, a lot of people who are in my business say, Richard, I would never have called you. So I would have been on their checking list. But that would have been a strong EC in your business you would have missed out on if you hadn't invited me. So this Greg may become a strong EC slash NC. So tell me a little bit about Greg, and let's put an invitation together for him. Okay, so the reason he's on my chicken list is because, for one, he is a relative, and so he's known me for 31 years, and he's seen the good, bad, and ugly, I guess you could say. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he's a su- successful business owner, and, mm-hmm. um, you know, I know him pretty well. And um, How old is he? So, I know him pretty well, I don't know his age. Uh, he is... Probably, gosh, uh, I want to say like 56. 50s, mid-50s? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Is he married? Married. He has two kids that still live at home. How old? That, uh, one of them's 30 and the other one's 27, just moved back in. And then the one that's 30 has two daughters that live at the house. So their house is packed. So they're all at home. So, hey, this may be actually something that he wants to offer to those guys to help get them out the, get them out the, uh, get them out the house. But, uh, all right, well, let's, let's start. Now, when we put an invitation together, guys, if you've got a pen and paper, you need to be writing this down because I believe there isn't one invite that fits everybody. I believe you invite an 18-year-old different than you invite an 80-year-old, a business owner differently than you invite your best friend. Um, and so I, in order to make them duplicatable, I have – um, kind of like these six rules that we kind of follow. And I, I'm going to kind of very quickly list what those rules are, and then I'm going to apply them to the invite as we put an invite together for Greg. So number one, the first thing is whenever we do any kind of a hurry, uh, sorry, any kind of invite, we're always in a hurry. So number one is to be in a hurry. Number two, or again, write this down, guys. Be in a hurry. Number two is your why. Number three is the hook where you're salting the oats. Number four is your purpose, which I'm going to cover in a second. Number five is a nice, solid takeaway. And number six is being really intentional in setting the date. So let's let's do this for Greg. So first of all, I'll be be calling Greg. I'll say, listen, Greg, I'm just, whatever you, I don't know what your thing is, but for me, um, uh, for me, if I'm going to be in a hurry, uh, uh, Sandra, I'm going to be like just about to get on a conference call. So I'll be like, hey, Greg, um, it's Sandra here. Obviously, he knows who you are if you're family. I'd say, listen, I'm just about to get on a, Sandra, uh, on to a, 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 um, a conference call. Have you got uh, – um, I just want to give you a quick call. Um, do you have a couple of minutes? Um, and just wait for an answer because you've obviously got to respect his time as well. So number one is be in a hurry, okay? So number two, now you want to talk about your why. Now, he's a relative. He's also seen you through your ups and your downs, okay? So – um, when I would talk about my why, um, I would – well, I, let me give you an example of my why. You've, you've obviously heard these on these calls before, but uh, as you know, I have a son, uh, Max. So, Sandra, let's say you and I were family and Max was your nephew, okay? So, um, that, that, so you'd, know about, uh, you'd know about Max. And I'd say, hey, listen, Sandra, I'm in a little bit of a hurry right now, but I've been meaning to give you a quick call. Do you have a, do you have a second? And you'll say yes. Um, I say, well, you know, um, last time we were together, I was telling you about Max going into college. Well, I'm super, super passionate that he comes out of college without all this student loan nonsense that, you know, you hear about all over the news. And I'm really kind of keen to make sure that that happens. So I will then talk about my why. So in your case, you may say, um, hey, Greg, I'm a little bit of a hurry right now. Um, do you have a couple of seconds? Um, so I'm in a little bit of a hurry right now. Um, I've been meaning to do a quick call. Do you have a couple of seconds? And he'll say, yes. Say, well, look, um, obviously you've known me for a long, long time. Um, you've, you've seen me through my ups and downs. Um, and as you know, I'm in my, uh, again, forgive me if I'm right or wrong, but I'm in my, I'm going to say 50s. Um, and uh, obviously I've got, you know, retirement, you know, on the horizon. And, and I've got to make sure I put something together with me. And sorry, what's your husband's name, Sandra? Carl. Carl. Um, we've got to put a, um, you know, we've obviously got to make sure we have a retirement program for, for, um, for Carl and I. Um, so that's, so I, and, and maybe you bring up, um, you know, the fact that you want to have um, something that you could leave for your son, you know, because you want to have something that's willable. 
So you've been in a hurry, and then you've talked about your why. And now we're going to talk about number three, which is the hook, which is salting the out. So I started, um, uh, I, I have a business, op- uh, sorry, a business project I've been working on in the DFW area that's doing really well for me right now. And uh, not only is it going to get my um, retirement done, um, retirement paid for, but it's going to make, I'm going to leave, have a really good will for, and what's your son's name? Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Um, I'm going to have, you know, a really nice will for, for, for Nathaniel as and as when it's our time. So you've talked about being in a hurry, then your why, then your hook, which is, so I got a start a new business project that's working really well for me in the DFW area. And I would say that's not only going to get Max's college paid for, but it's going to be a really large contribution towards my retirement as well. Okay, so had my why, sorry, my been in a hurry, had my why. And then number three was um, the hook. Number four, the purpose of the call. So the reason why I'm calling you, Greg, is, is really a couple of reasons. And with Greg, with him being a successful business owner, I think I would go for a, an a opinion approach. Um, uh, and so there's a couple of ways you can go. Um, like, for example, if it was um, more of a, uh, if, if you were talking to, you know, someone who wasn't someone who was on your chicken list or a business owner, I'd say, so Greg, I, I wanted you to take a look, first of all, because I'm, I'm just spreading the word. I want people to know what I'm doing. And uh, there may be a situation where you can f- refer me to folks. But, but secondly, uh, Greg, I know you have a couple of um, uh, kids at home um, that, uh, you know, what may be looking for something, this may be something that, that you wanted to do or could help them do. Okay. I'm not going to go for that approach with Greg. I'm actually going to go for the opinion approach, but that's, that's what, what I would usually do. I'd say, Hey Greg, and I want to, I want you to take a look at what I'm doing because uh, I'm spreading the word, but I know that you'll be able to, you know, refer me to people down the line. Um, but with Greg, I'd say, but more importantly, Greg, obviously you're a very, very successful businessman. And I've always respected the way you've run your businesses. And I'd really appreciate you spending just a, a couple of minutes looking over what I'm doing because um, I'd really appreciate your opinion and maybe some guidelines as to, so I can make sure that I'm successful. This is, I'm at a point in my life where this has to be successful. Okay, so we were in a hurry. You mentioned your why. You had the hook of starting a business project and then your purpose, which is a two-part, which is, you know, I want to let people know what I'm doing so you can potentially refer me. But secondly... And in Greg's case, because he's on your chicken list and the business owner, I'm going to ask for an opinion. And so I really wanted to get an idea of, you know, what you thought about the business. I want to show you what I'm doing so you can maybe give me some pointers. Um, uh, and so that's what I would do next. And then number five, um, uh, it would usually be a takeaway, but we're not offering him the business. We're asking for an opinion. If I'd gone the first route where I was saying it may be something you'd want to do yourself, I would that would have a nice big strong takeaway. It may or may not be your cup of tea, Greg, and that's perfectly fine. But we're not going to do that because we're asking for an opinion, and that would be pointless to say I want your opinion. You wouldn't need to take it away because you're not offering them the business at the partic- this particular time. Because and the reason why an opinion works so well is because that's how I was invited into the business, Sandra. I was not interested in these types of businesses, and some and the, and the guy who invited me said. Well, I'm going to show your son anyway, and I want to make sure that you know what I'm showing him because I'd really appreciate your opinion as to whether it would be something he'd want to do or not. And so I looked at the business, and I joined. And so we're going to hope Greg does the same thing. Very often, successful business owners can see a good thing when they see it. And so that's what we're hoping for on this. So um, we've gone for an opinion, um, and now we're going to set a solid date. So I don't know. Is he local to you, by the way, Sandra? Yes, yes. So uh, I don't know what you're doing tomorrow after work around 5 o'clock. Um, there's a Starbucks just around the, co- around the corner from you. Let me buy you a coffee, show you what I'm doing, and I really appreciate um, your input. So that's what I would do. So, the whole, so this is the whole thing now, okay? Um, hey, Greg, this is uh, – uh, and I'm going to be Sandra for a while, except I've got a little bit of a cold, which is why my voice is so deep. <laughs> hey, listen, Greg, this is Sandra here. Um, I've been meaning to give you a call all week. Do you, do you have a couple of seconds? And he'll say yes. So, um, remember, um, you know, last time we spoke, um, you know, that uh, I, I've been a little bit concerned about getting Carl and I set up for our retirement. We don't have very much set up. Um, and I want to make sure that I have something for Nathaniel um, as and when it's our time. And we want to make sure we have something to lead to him. So I started a new business project that's going really, really well for me in the DFW area. And not only is it going to get us our retirement done, but we're going to leave a nice, hefty chunk for Nathaniel, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. But the reason why I'm giving you a call, Greg, is, is I'm letting everybody know what I do. 
um, because I want to make sure that um, if there are any referrals you can send my way, that would be awesome. But secondly, Greg, um, you've been a very successful businessman, and I've watched you from afar as you built your businesses, um, and I really respect that. And I, I really would appreciate your opinion and maybe a little bit of advice. Um, this is, you know, I'm, I'm in my 50s now. I've got to make sure this works. And I want to make sure I do it right. So I really appreciate your opinion. So I don't know what you're doing after work um, tomorrow, about 5 o'clock, 5.30. There's a Starbucks literally just around the corner from you. I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee. Or on Tuesday, I'm going to be free for lunch and actually not far from your office. So I could do tomorrow coffee or Tuesday lunchtime. What would be better for you? That's how I would invite Greg. But, but the thing as well, did really you... Good. Okay, so you feel, and, you, so, and this is the thing is, if you get an invite that you feel comfortable with, your posture on the call is going to be really strong. Well, let me so share again, with make you. So, so what go, I did is I, I, took, I took a little walk uh, before this call, and I was going through, you know, I listened when uh, you, uh, you know, interviewed with Christy, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I know she sat down and kind of told you what she was going to say, so I wasn't sure if I had to prepare anything, so... I prepared mm-hmm. what I was going to say to Greg as I was walking, and I love how you really tweaked what I was saying to him because, you know, I know to always include the why, but for some reason, maybe because we're related, I forgot that whole part. So I mm-hmm. love that because that will really help set me up to where he will continue to listen to me, that I'm not trying to sell him something, that, that it, it gets close to the family. So I love that. And then – what I did in my invite that I wrote, you know, I, I did ask him, you know, I told him I really respect him as a business owner, a, a, a leader in his business, and wanted his opinion. But then I came down a couple of sentences later, or even before, I'm not sure where I put that, and was just kind of like, this may or may not be for you. I gave him the offer and the opinion, and so now I know, leave that off. If I'm going to ask for the yeah. and leave it at that. So yeah, we can't. We've got to make sure the invite. We've got to make sure the invite is clear, is black and white. And sometimes people's effort to put everything in there makes it cloudy. He's going to look at this. If he likes it, or during the presentation, it may be. You know, if he says, "Yeah, I'll take a look at it, no problem," and he's giving you opinion stuff during the presentation, I mean, not in the invite. You could say, "You know, this actually may be something for Sue and Joe, whatever his kids' name are, kids' names are." Um, you could that, but that's at the presentation. The most important thing is the reason why the why is so important is you want him listening with his heart and not his brain. And again, because he's family, because he cares about you, because he knows you're not that far away from retirement, just like him, he will listen with his heart. And that's what you need to have people doing. So um, I, this call is being recorded, um, and I don't know if you managed to get notes, but um, I'm going to make sure I get this posted so you can write that invite down. Not that's because great. you're yeah, going to use it as a, a script, but because it's there as a guideline in case you get lost. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been taking notes, and yeah, I feel like I want to hear that again. And if I may ask a, a couple more things about this or mention sure. something. So, so um, since he is family, his wife, who is my sister-in-law, may have told him what I'm doing. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. I have asked to see her electric bill for the office, and so mm-hmm. they may have talked. So my question to you is if after all that he comes back and says, yeah, I know you're doing electricity, and he starts to kind of try to give me his opinion or something, where would I go with that? Just, how that's would I- why number one, okay, that's a really good question, and this is perfect for you guys listening in. This is where the number one part of the invite is so valuable. He's going to start dragging you into a, into a presentation, the valley of death, the one thing that none of us want to be doing. And so number one is being in a hurry is the fact that you said at the beginning of the call, listen, I've got to you know, pick up my husband from the doctor or I'm whatever you being in a hurry. I'm not, I'm not saying lie to him. I'm saying definitely be in a hurry. Have to have something to be in a hurry for and say, listen, Greg, because he may say to you, look, is this, is this ambit or something like that if he knows it is? And you can say, yeah, yeah, and that's, and that's why I needed your opinion because it's relatively new for me. I know you have business experience and that's why I want to get together. So is, is Monday going to be okay for you? Or, or the Tuesday lunchtime. So we're not denying, we're not trying to hide it or whatever, but you must be in a hurry. Because if he tries to drag you into a conversation, say, listen, so he says, he comes back to you and says, 
Um, is this is this is this the ambit thing, or what 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 what's going on? Is this about the electricity deal? And you can say, yeah, absolutely, it is. But Greg, I, I don't have time to get into it right now because I've got to get on that conference call or whatever it is, which is why I wanted to make an appointment with you. So, you know, is uh, uh, and again, back to dr- drilling down on a very intentional setting of time is is the, is tomorrow at um, for the coffee or or Tuesday lunchtime better for you? Okay, so again, be yourself, but that number one being in a hurry will get you out of all sorts of pickles. Perfect, perfect. And the last thing with him is I know I've heard you ask before, where is pain for them? Where is, you know, maybe a why for them? And I had one for him. You know, they they had gotten, uh, well, I don't want to get too personal. They got into something back in 2008 that collapsed, and it was a lot of money for them. It was going to be part of their retirement. I mean, he makes a lot of money, but... They lost a lot in that, and so I kind of had that as it. But I guess I don't really. I'm never going to really use that. In well, training. remember what re- remember what our job to do on this call is. The, the training that I give on this call is to give you the best opportunity for him to look at the business. We okay. don't care if he joins or not. Remember that. We don't okay. care if he joins. We hope he does. But if he doesn't, that's perfectly fine. Our job is to get him to look, and we don't need more than a bunch of reasons for that. Okay, so, you know, pick, pick what it is. If it's, if it's your opinion, then stick to that one thing, clear cut. You know, I want to show you what I'm doing just because I, I want uh, exposure for my business. But secondly, I want your opinion. So are you available for coffee tomorrow around 5.30? Or again, Tuesday, I'm going to be right in your area for, for, for lunch. I can, you know, we can, uh, I can buy a, a slice of salmon at Cheddar's or whatever, you know. But really intentional about setting the time. Keep it focused. Perfect. And, and when you have it written down, remember, have it written down, be, you know, be prepared. It's going to improve your posture. If you're winging it, it's going to be all over the place. You're going to, you know, it's going to, what should be 30 seconds is going to end up two minutes, and, he's going to, and you're going to get all in the pickle. So as I say, remember, get this written down, not as a script, but as a guideline, because also what may happen, and we're spending a lot of time on one invite here, and that is just okay. Um, because it is important, is, is what may happen is if he's family, halfway through the invite, he may throw you for a wobbly. He may all of a sudden, you know, when you start talking about, you know, creating awareness, or he say, yeah, I remember when I had my business, blah, blah, blah. You know, creating awareness was really difficult for me. And we, we actually got involved with a, a PR company and blah, blah. And all of a sudden, he's gone off on a tangent. And you're like, oh, my gosh, how do I get back onto it? But you're fine. You know you got to number four. Okay, and you say, okay, well, what we do, you know, number four was to let him know, but also, okay, opinion and uh, and the uh, invite, the actual setting the time for a strong invite. So have it written down, not as a script, but as a guideline. Okay. Thank you. That's really. All good. right. So this is a, this is awesome. This is a good chicken list one first, but you will be absolutely fine, and it is absolutely crucial that you don't care if he joins or not. If he looks and he sees it, he'll join. If he looks and doesn't see it, he won't, and that's fine. Because in I six months, we're going to give him another call anyway. That just takes the load off to have that. I, I love that, that, that the whole attitude, it doesn't matter if he joins or not. What matters is that he takes a look, and then that's however it. that works out. I love that. You get, okay, a, you, get 100, you get a 100% score okay. if he looks, not if he joins. If he looks, remember, all you'll hear, you know, you hear the big leaders talk about show the plan, show the plan, show the plan, show the plan. That's all we want to do is we want an opportunity to show the plan. All right. So a lot of detail on that, on that invite, but that's perfectly fine because it's relevant to everybody who's on this call. And if it's, you, you you'll have great posture because you have this all prepared. All right. Let's, let's have a look at um, the next person on your list, which is Jerry. Tell me about Jerry. Look, Gary, G-A-R-Y, Gary. Sorry. Gary, so right. it's your funny Texan accent. <laughs> <laughs> so Gary uh, was my massage therapist, and he also, by day, has his own chiropractic business in Grapevine. And um, I have not used him as a massage therapist for a couple years. Probably mm-hmm. in the last year, we I friended him on Facebook. Um, he has one daughter. Who is How old? I, I, I'm guessing maybe 11. Okay. Is he married? Is Gary married? He's married, yes. 
Okay. Um, you know of any? Do you know of any pain he may have? Is his business like taking all his time away from his daughter, or has he ever expressed any pain? You know, I I don't know. I mean, you know, that's he fine. Has chiropractic business by day, and then he does this massage stuff in the evening. So, you know, I I you know I don't know if it's just the day chiropractic business isn't bringing in enough money, or he just makes so much. I I just really don't know. Never gotten that close. Um, I just know well, it, it, it may be a, it may be, in this particular situation. I may take a guess at his why, which will be if he's working chiropractor in the day and massage at night, he's not getting to see his daughter. And so, um, so, so my invite. For, so, did you want to have a go at the invite, bearing in mind that uh, you said you may have had a preparation with it, or do you want me to help you with it? <laughs> well, for Gary, I didn't have a whole lot. I kind of was thinking it was going to kind of be similar to what I had written for Greg. And just, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, basically I had the hurry down, you know. Hey, Gary, I'm in a hurry. I know you're really busy and you're in a – I'm sure you're in a hurry as well. Do you just have a quick minute? Um, That's good. And then I just – I really didn't write anything down for him. Uh, okay. Like Let's in, – in which case, let me let me help you out here. So you're in a hurry, number two. What is your why? Okay, so – It'd be, hey, Gary, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a super hurry right now. I've got to get down to the, 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 the store or whatever it is. Um, but I've been meaning to give you a call uh, this, uh, this week. Have you, have you got a quick minute like you just did? Perfect. And he'll say, sure, yeah, no problem. He'll say, well, listen, um, uh, I, uh, I don't know if, if when we've been together before I mentioned to you that um, uh, my husband and I have been working really, really hard to make sure we've got enough retirement put together. Um, you know, as you know, we're, we're, we're not getting any younger, you know, we're, you obviously you can say that with a smile on your face, um, which will come across down the phone. Um, and so recently, uh, I started a new business project that's going really, really well for me in the, the DFW area. Uh, and I'm really excited about it. And it's absolutely going to cover us for our retirement. So I'm, I'm super excited about it. But, but Gary, here's the, the reason why I'm giving you a call is a couple of reasons is I know you in your business. I know you know a lot of people. Um, and obviously in my business, like in your business, I've got to create awareness. I want people to know what I'm doing. So I'm kind of basically calling around and letting everybody know what I'm doing um, so that um, if at some point there's an opportunity, you can maybe refer me. And he'll, he'll be like, yeah, sure, yeah, I understand. Um, but secondly, the second reason why I wanted to give you a, uh, give you a call um, is that I know you, you, ha- you have a daughter, and I know you work your chiropractic business during the day, and you have a massage business at night, um, and I want you to take a look at what I'm doing because it may be something that you want to do because it'll give you all a whole bunch of your time back, which I know that you've got to be struggling for um, it, with your uh, with getting time to see your daughter. So, I, this, and listen, Gary, I don't know if it's going to be your cup of tea or not, and that's perfectly fine. Um, again, if nothing else, then certainly you can re- make referrals for me. But what are you doing after? Um, uh, between, uh, you know, when you finish the chiropractic and you start your massage business, let, let's go grab a, grab a cup of coffee. I'll show you what I'm doing and see if it makes sense for you. That's how I would invite Gary. Okay, okay. that's really good. It's going to take me a little while to get that smooth with it, but... Um, uh, I understand. I, I like this is why it's so important. That's why it's so important to write the whole thing down. Yes. I will have to write um, that down. Look at that you know, again. whether you want to include a guess, you're, you're guessing at his why. You know, he may be working his chiropractic business and his massage business because he hates going home and he doesn't want to go home. We don't know what his why is. So you don't have to put that in if, if you don't want to. So when you're talking about the purpose of the call, you may say, hey, Gary, I want you to take a look at the business because, you know, it's, it, like your business, we've got a market. We've got to make sure that people know what we're doing. And I'd love you to see what I'm doing. So maybe you could refer me. But secondly, um, this, uh, I want to show you the business because um, I've seen the way you run your business, uh, and this business may actually be something you want to do too. Just be really direct. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be your cup of tea or not, but um, uh, I know you have time between your chiropractic business and your massage business. Um, let me buy you a cup of coffee. I'll, it'll take about 15 minutes to show you what I'm doing and see if it makes sense. Okay, sounds good. So you can shorten it down if you want to rather than guessing at his why and just be really direct. Okay, I like that. 
Absolutely. And again, you, you know, it may or may not be your cup of tea. Remember, the takeaway is really important because we want to make sure he feels comfortable and say, listen, it may or may not be your cup of tea, and, and that's perfectly fine. Again, the most important thing to me is that I create the awareness so that you can refer me um, as and when it's appropriate. So again, this has been recorded for those of you who are listening and thinking, God, I didn't get that all written down. I will get it posted tonight and you can write that invitation down for, the, for someone who's in that particular situation. Do you have any questions on that, Sandra? I don't. That was really good. And um, it's going to be helpful for the, for the next person on my list because um, Brian is also a chiro- uh, chiropractor. Um, he was actually my chiropractor. That's why I never used Gary as my chiropractor. I used him as my massage therapist, and, and uh, Brian was my chiropractor. And Okay, so how old is Brian? So Brian is a little... Roughly. Uh, uh, you know, 40s. 40s, married? Married, has three children. How old are the kids? So two of them are pretty little. Uh, one of them probably just, I'm thinking, a couple years old, and the other one maybe like closer to four. And then the other one uh, was from a previous marriage, and he's, he's a teenager. Okay. All right. So let, let's have a slightly different one. Do you know of any pain he may have? Has he, has he expressed any pain? Has he worked too hard, or is he worried about getting all the kids' college education paid for, or anything like that? Has he ever mentioned anything? I really- Really don't know. He owns his own chiropractic business, um, uh, and you know, I just don't. I, I haven't seen him. I haven't gone to him for probably three years. But he's very approachable. I'm very comfortable with speaking with him. He's a very kind man, and I, I, I believe he would take the time. You know, if I approach him correctly, I think he, you know, properly. I, I believe he would give me that time. Well, this is going to be pretty much exactly the same as Greg, although I may actually put the Y in there. Um, I may refer to, does you, is your son going to college or are you going to have any expenses for your son at college or anything like that, do you think? Um, he's not in college currently. He's had some college. He's talked about going back, and that has been an issue for him of, of the college. Okay, going. That's- that, that's fine. Um, but um, so, so what I would do maybe is because it's really good when you can share the why with someone. Like, for example, with me, if I was calling Brian, you know, I may say, hey, and he knew who I was and he knew Max. I'd say, hey, Brian, I'm a little bit of a hurry right now, um, but I've been meaning to give you a call this week. I, haven't, I know we haven't spoken for the longest time, uh, but do you have a couple of minutes? And he'll say, sure. I say, well, you know, Max is, you know, last time you saw Max, he was, what, he was 15, 16? You know, he's, he's now uh, 19, 18, 19, just going into college. Um, and I'm, it's really important to me that I make sure that he's got all those college funds paid for and stuff. So I started a business project recently that's going really, really well for me, and I'm really excited about it. Not only is he going to get his college funds paid for, but my retirement's going to be covered as well, and I'm, I'm super excited about it. But the reason why I'm calling you, Brian, is, is actually twofold. I, initially... I just want you to know what I'm doing. And like with your chiropractic business, we've got to make sure that people know what we're doing. Uh, And I want you to just to to know what I'm doing. So if at some point it's relevant, um, you can maybe refer refer me. But Brian, more than that, I know you've got three kids yourself and you've got obviously your teenager who's going to be getting up for college uh, college age uh, too. And this actually may be a business, a project that you want to do as well to help fund his college deal as well. Now, listen, Brian, I don't know if it's going to be your cup of tea or not, and that's perfectly fine. I completely understand that. But what are you doing after work tomorrow about 5.30? There's a Starbucks literally just around the corner from you. Let me buy you a coffee, you know, take a look at what I'm doing and see if it makes sense. Okay, so hear my posture on that is I'm very positive about getting together with him. We're going to get together. But um, you know, it may or may not be your cup of tea. I'm keeping him really relaxed because we want the opportunity for him to look at the business. So that's how I would invite Brian. But just insert your why in there, slightly obviously differently, different than mine with Max. Just put your why in there, either, you know, your retirement issues or the, the fact that you want to make sure that you have um, a legacy for, for Nathaniel. Okay, that's good. Make, makes sense. So, okay, so that's, so we've got three invites done. Um, we're getting kind of close towards uh, nine o'clock, and I want to make sure um, that we get off we get get off uh, off the call in time for the national call. I never want to step on um, uh, Mr. McClure's uh, feet and uh, and get in the way of his call. So I do want to make sure that we do that. So um, uh, we've got uh, invites done for obviously for Greg, 
uh, and now for Gary and then for Brian. And what we'll do is we'll get some more invites done on the accountability call tomorrow. So for those of you who are listening in and want to hear more invites, uh, invites put together, um, I'll make sure that when we do the accountability call tomorrow, we'll do a couple more invites. I'll record them and I'll put them up on the EC Riders Facebook page. Um, do listen to them. You can listen to my lovely English dulcet tones as you drive into work or drive back or whatever it is. But, the, but those calls during the week as we go through um, what went right and went, what, wrong, what went wrong with the calls as well as putting more invitations together, those calls are really, 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 really valuable. Not because I'm blowing my own, hum, uh, my own trumpet here. It's not that at all. I'm not teaching anybody here anything that they don't already know. I just want you to go through a real live week with people doing real live interviews with re- – uh, in, sorry, invites with real live people who are going to react in real live ways. I want – you to get a feel for how that is because that's your ambit world as well. And it's going to go wrong and it's going to go right. And those accountability calls are awesome because we deal with it. Because so often when a call goes wrong, sometimes that's the reason that was the last straw on the camel's back and why someone quits the business. And so that's why these types of calls are so important. It's about getting structure, putting that, putting that, making sure the time's put aside, and put into your calendar. So, Sandra, I'm going to say good night to you for this evening. You did an awesome job. Thank you very much. And you sound super, super relaxed. I've got a couple of texts from people saying um, how much they've enjoyed the call. So, uh, so uh, you obviously did a good job. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate it. This is just huge, and I just can't thank you enough. Hey, no, no. I'm, 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 I, go ahead. Sorry. I just have to get on these calls with you when they're done. They say it's the best week they've ever had, and I felt like. I, had, I could already say that to you just by preparing this, knowing that I was going to speak to you, and I prepared this list. I feel like I'm already having the best week ever. So thank you. Well, that's very, that's very, very kind of you to say so. But the thing is, it, it's absolutely true, is if you prepare your week, if you take a little bit of time to get your names, get the invites done, then you're pretty much assured to have a good ambit week. A good ambit week is where you've made the calls you said you were going to make. Not necessarily that someone joined your business. It's that you did what you needed to do because if you talk to enough people, you'll find your three. So that's why we do this call. So we're three minutes to nine o'clock. I'm going to give you the national call number. Don't go yet. Don't go yet because I'm going to make sure that I really quickly summarize what we've been talking tonight. Um, But uh, just so you've got the um, the call number down, the number for the national call is 712-432-432. 7570 again 712 432 7570 and the pin is 84877 pound again 84877 pound okay so as i say good night to sandra i'm going to just literally take 60 seconds to make sure that you guys are all ready my job is to make sure that you guys have a good week next week and it doesn't take much we're talking about everybody on this call wants an ambit a successful ambit business Otherwise, you wouldn't be on this call. But you're only going to have a successful ambit business if you do what you say you're going to do, which is actually some activity during the week. The structure that's in place is to make sure that you do that. So get your written list together. You use the Erica system to score it and get 10 names to the top. If you don't have time to do that um, in time for this week, don't worry. Just pick 10 names from your list. Put some invites together with your accountability partner. And then make two calls tomorrow. Make just, just make the two invites using the six uh, elements of the, uh, of the invite, of making sure you're in a hurry, uh, uh, making sure you have your wire and all of those things. Again, it's recorded call. It's, we're almost at 9 o'clock, so I don't want to go into that for right now. But make sure you put the time and allocate the time in your calendar. Guys, have a fantastic structured week. We'll be doing the calls during the week, the accountability calls. I'll record them. And next Sunday, we're going to go, we're going to go through this week and we're going to purge our call, which is why this call is called the purge call. So, guys, have a super night. I'm going to get on the national call for right now. Guys, thank you very much for getting on. I really appreciate all the numbers of people that are on. Thank you very much, guys. Have a super, super week. And I will see everybody next Sunday. Thanks, Sam. Bye-bye.